Yep, that's right. Today we're going to be taking a look inside my 20 second sketchbook. You'll see the good art, the bad art, the scribbles, and the more detailed scribbles. <laughs> so yeah, let's take a look, shall we? Oh, and before you ask, this is the ELO sketchbook. You can see their logo back there. It's an eight by eight square sketchbook. And then I drew the little hearts and the title on there with some acrylic paint. Then I also put some on the side so I can put it in my bookcase and reference it easily if I need to for some reason. I've never had to reference a sketchbook, but you know, it could happen. Here I have some thumbnails for my opening spread, which is this one, and I welcome you to my sketchbook and I also put the dates that I filled the sketchbook within. It's been a little while. I'm finally filming this. It's okay. <laughs> There's some sketches here. Here I was designing a character kind of based off a character I've already drawn before. A bit of like a fairy princess, but there's like feathers. I don't know. It doesn't entirely make a lot of sense. Here I was trying to come up with like some ideas for how I wanted to draw some characters of mine. So I was kind of playing with the art style and the proportions of the bodies. I really like this page. I was designing like postcards that maybe they could be featured on. You kind of just see how their proportions look and how they're a little bit different than maybe my style was before these. And I have, there's wheels. Um, I think this one was supposed to be me. And then we have Scoot. I don't know if I drew Dex. Oh, there she is right there. And there I drew all three of them together, Dex, Wheels, and Scoot. Here's a character I created. I actually filmed this, but I just didn't like the way it turned out, so I never posted that one. <laughs> You'll see the further we go into the sketchbook, my go-to is to just draw random girls with very similar hairstyles. <laughs> Over here, we have my original character, Maggie. And oh, I was looking for this. I couldn't find it. I really like how I've broken down the shapes here. So there's like a circle for the head, a little triangle for the nose, and like a square for the ear. And I kind of just break down the shape so that I can draw my dog. He's walking around right now. Hi, you want to say hi? Is that you? Is this you? Yeah, hopefully you'll see that drawing in the future. I want to use it for something. <laughs> Here I started doing the, I think it's a hundred faces in 10 days challenge. I don't know. It was something that was going around YouTube. A lot of other artists are doing it. I can't remember what channel started it, but I'll find it and link them somewhere. This first couple that I did. So you have to draw 10 faces in a day and they link to a Pinterest board that you can use for reference if you'd like. So these are all from that Pinterest board. So you might recognize these faces if you've seen any of those videos that other people have done. But yeah, these were a lot of fun. I think it ends around there. And then these are just some sketches from my own ideas. It was just a large project that I wasn't ready to start at the time. So maybe I'll tackle it again later. I think I learned a lot about like the cheek structure that I didn't really understand before. So that was really cool. Here's some um, thumbnailing for an idea for from an art box. These were ideas I was trying to come up with what to use my yellow art supplies because I do a thing where I draw with every single art supplies of a single color. And for yellow, I really wanted to do something family friendly, family friendly, family and friendly. That's what yellow makes me think of. So those were some ideas there. This I think was like a sketchbook spread that I filmed. This was like trying to use gouache again, which I hadn't used in a long time. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Oh, I love this page. I like the way the colors work together. <laughs> I have some yellow ideas on this side there. Just testing the art supplies. Here I was again thumbnailing some ideas for my yellow video. You can kind of see how I like pinpoint the idea a little bit more. Here I was playing around with that art style from earlier. Here I was feeling ugly. Here I tried to draw myself. I tried to like use my fingers without using a reference and like figure out my proportions, but this is not right. <laughs> so like you can see I use circles for all the fingers and I would like keep slapping my face to just figure out where and the distance between all of my facial features. <laughs> But somehow this doesn't look anything like me because I think you need to actually know the shape of everything to be able to figure that out. Interesting tidbit I learned there. I was using Posca pens for an entire illustration, which I don't often do. And I was trying to come up with an idea for a character for that. My favorite thing is to kind of come up with characters. And as you can see here, I just drew the same one over and over again. I really like the colors of this one and the way the yellow and the magenta look together. These are all done with the Dr. P.H. Martin India inks. And you can kind of see how you can get pinpoints by using a dip pen. And then if you use a paintbrush mixed in with a little bit of water, you can get those fun washes. 
I need to use those more. Oh, there's so many art supplies. I just want to use more. <laughs> like I really want to get back into sculpting, but it's just, it's a bit more of a time consuming art medium and I just haven't been able to do it. Anyway, <laughs> here's that same character. I kind of tried experimenting with a different outfit and maybe giving her body art. Oh, here, I was trying to come up with an idea to use on a wood panel because I bought this four pack of wood panels that were all perfectly square and I wanted to use watercolor on it, but I ran into a few problems. This is the idea I ended up going with. I can actually just grab it and show you since it's never gonna be a video. Ooh, you can kind of see the process of creating the character and then this is kind of what it came up with. I ran into a lot of problems and ended up using some opaque paint on top of it to fix a lot of the mistakes. And then I just started doodling on top of it and I like it a lot more now but that's not what it looked like after I was done with the watercolor because yeah, I this went through a long process. <laughs> I don't hate it anymore, but it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. And then I started layering more stuff on top until it had like so many different things that would distract you from the parts I didn't like. And now I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. That's how that happened. we back to the sketchbook. Pretty sparse page, that's kind of rare for me. I must've been going through a thing. <laughs> Some more character designs. Oh, it's drawing in the dark. I guess I didn't feel like turning on the light or the power was out. So these are some sketches that I drew in the dark. This, I think we're moving into Mermaid. This is one of the first years that I didn't draw Mermaid sketches in my sketchbook. I used a bunch of A5 paper because I, I had all these grand ideas that I could do with them if I didn't put them in my sketchbook but I kind of regret not putting them in my sketchbook because now I'm probably never gonna like bump into them again, you know? <laughs> but just like in a folder somewhere. Here's some ideas. I wanted to try and create my original characters as mermaids, so like petals and wheels. You can kind of see I was experimenting with that. Didn't get too far. Well, again, this is a pretty sparse page, but I kind of like this drawing right here. Here. This was a draw this in your style. So I recreated a drawing by Vanessa Draws. And that's one of the ones that I kept in my sketchbook. Here I was drawing a bit of a fairy character. Again, using feathers. I don't know what in my head connects feathers with fairies, but there's another one of those. <laughs> oh, this was a drawing that my friend asked me to draw. This is experimenting with some art supplies from an art box again more experimenting, trying to figure out how to use them. They were very thick art supplies and it was very hard to like pinpoint any sort of details. And here, I think this is the first time I tested my Ohu brush marker. Here is another mermaid drawing that I liked so much I decided to stick it in my sketchbook. What are they called? They're like oil sticks, pastel oil sticks or something. So it like feels very waxy if you touch it. Here is testing all of my pink art supplies so that I could use that for a drawing. And here are some thumbnails for ideas. I ended up drawing a bit of a mean girl or kind of like a, it was inspired by a mean girl, but it ended up being kind of very cute and she looked very pleasant. <laughs> oh, here I did a video on filling in a spread when you have no idea what you want to draw. So you can see up at the top left, I just started drawing random old things and then we connected them and created a character because create character design is what I like to draw the most. And we ended up with this beauty right here. <laughs> Our little minimum wage high schooler. Here's some more experimenting. I don't know, I went through a lot of phases where I just didn't feel confident in my art. And I think that's the ones where I'm not filling the spread as much, but I do like the way these sketches kind of like fill the page like that. Like picked random art supplies out of like one of my containers like this. I think I picked two or three and then I tried to make art with it. Hey. Here's a spread I filled using really dark mostly black ink. I think I used a little bit of purple and blue here and there, but I just wanted to draw something dark and emotional. And this is what I came up with. I really like the depth of this, these pages. Like they really stand out compared to like this one. This one I decided not to draw on this side just cause I think it was still wet. And here we have some Jet Set Radio fan art. <laughs> I'm a bigger fan of Jet Set Radio Future personally, but I really wanted to draw Muse design there. Here I was concepting some ideas for like a surfer character, kind of like in Pokemon, how they have like a male and a female version of like swimmers, youngsters, trainers and things like that, that you can battle. I kind of wanted to take that concept and create my own swimmer characters. And here I tried it again, but doing it with a youngster character and I drew them some more. Here I was trying to plan out my outfits. I don't even know if you can see that anymore. I wonder if I could take like a white gel pen and like outline them so you can see it a little better. Can you see it any better now? Maybe not. 
I might look a little self-obsessed, but yeah, there's three of me right there. <laughs> Here, I was think I was testing out the Ohu brush markers. So I was drawing my original character wheels over and over again with her friends Dex and Scoot in the background there. Here's some more thumbnail ideas because I wanted to try and create something with Play-Doh and I kind of like came up with this design, but it didn't quite work as well as I wanted it to. See like Play-Doh, dried Play-Doh bits all over the place. But I really like the way this um, sketch turned out. So I would like to turn that into something else in the future maybe. Oh, here it was when I was planning out my ATC cards. I wanted to create one for like all of my original characters. This is Wheels, Dex and Scoot. Here's another random girl character, which happens a lot. Here I was thumbnailing some ideas for my draw this in your style, or I recreate your art. And so these were a few that I had chosen and I was trying to come up with an idea of how I would lay it out on the page. Here we have my original character petals, just chilling there. This is from a video where I challenged myself to see what I could draw in one hour. So I started with absolutely no idea of what I was gonna draw. Started there, went through, and I actually came out with a finished drawing, which I don't have here. I actually moved to a whole new A5 sheet of paper, and I created this character with like, it was kind of similar to this, but it had like smoke and stuff. So if you wanna see that, I guess you'll have to check out that video because it's not around. Here's when I was trying my hand at like graffiti. I really like this one still. Um, I actually moved it onto a much larger canvas again. I think it was a big wood panel and I, you know, tried that out. I did a lot of research for that video, but I was still very wrong or misunderstood a lot of the things that I looked up. So I kind of want to try that again with my new knowledge. So I know there's so many things I want to do, <laughs> so many things. And then we have a beautiful blobfish over there. This is a page where I was having so much fun with the graffiti that I decided I just wanted to really make a mess and not worry about how it would turn out in the end. So here we have just a bunch of splotch and you can see I like tested that idea where you use a paint marker and you just splotch it, hold it to the side like this and then it just drips down and it's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed this page. But my favorite parts are just like drawing random shapes and you know, just making a mess and not worrying about how it turned out because I get really stressed out when my art's not turning out and I think this was really good therapy for me and it might be about time that I do it again. <laughs> and I went back to creating more characters, mostly faces, because those are like my personal favorite thing to draw. <laughs> I think I was listening to an audiobook, like The Lord of the Rings, when I started drawing these pink ones here. I was like trying to draw a rose and I really like this face right here. I think that one turned out really nice. Oh yeah, look, <laughs> here's Frodo right there. Oh, and then I drew my doggy cause he was laying and looking at me. So that's him there. And I was having a lot of fun experimenting with circular shapes and drawing faces with circles. So those are really, really like this style and I'd like to experiment more with that. I've kind of been leaning towards a more cartoony art style lately. I like to ex experiment, change it up. This is more my art style that I kind of, when I'm Doing digital art though, I feel like I have more room to experiment with more detail or realism. Note the air quotes. <laughs> it's obviously still very cartoony, but I have a lot more room to change what it looks like and like edit things as I go. Whereas in traditional art, you have to like erase and then it makes a mess and I don't know. Digital art is still my baby. I really miss digital art. But here I was kind of trying to like organize all my junk and figure out how much of each thing I had in case if I ever gonna buy storage solutions for them instead of just leaving them all over the place. So I was kind of like trying to organize it by quantity. So the bigger the square, the more of it I have. I got really confused, so it didn't really work out, but it'd be really nice if I could easily access what I want when I want it, you know? You're trying that sort of round art style again. Not quite capturing it as well as I like these. I think this one is more 3D and this one feels very flat. So I need to figure out what the difference is there and fix that in the future. Here's when I was attempting to draw roses. This is still my favorite one. I think that turned out really well. Apparently I was a little sad. I drew someone very sad there. Here are some more blobfish. <laughs> but I've been trying to experiment with drawing characters that are more three dimensional and aren't so flat. I think it really helps the art look better overall. So I've been kind of trying to experiment with that. Here we have a little gymnast. I was using some Spectrum Noir markers, the new ones with the brush tips. I think Jazza redesigned. These were not his exclusive set. This is a nice like pastel set. I really love the colors in this set. It looks like a sunset. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I was using those for this character here. And then I used the yellow one for wheels. <laughs> and you can see I'm just trying to recreate 
what I really liked about those earlier sketches that I showed you that were very round. And I'm trying to like capture why it is that I like them. So I keep trying to like draw it over and over again, just trying to take in the knowledge. And yeah, here's more of the gymnast doing gymnasty things. <laughs> Here we have like an older Magna girl, it looks like. Um, some more sketches. These ones are a little bit looser, less refined. And then here I tried to draw a Charmander from memory. Even looking at it, I can't figure out what makes it not look like a Charmander, but it just doesn't. Here I decided to draw a male character. So here we have our little dude with glasses. <laughs> girl, then it's just the girl. And then our gymnast is back. All right, here's a couple faces. I was trying to experiment using specific shapes. So here's the circle one. Here's more of an oval, triangles, squares, blobs. I don't know. <laughs> and we have a little blobfish drawn in pen and some more pen sketches. Oh, and then here, this is some art that I did a very long time ago. Cause some reason when I was doing a, designing a character off of three colors, I think was the video or something. I decided to start in the back. So I started here. These were the three colors that I got. This is the, what I started drawing from that I came up with like a word association designed our character yeah that's back in March <laughs> and I further experimented with the character design then started throwing in the colors to see how well they looked and how I wanted them to look in the finished design um, this is something I actually just drew the other day <laughs> I saw a girl with these giant um, flower earrings. So I wanted to give that a go myself. And I tried to recreate the hairstyle as well. I don't know, pretty people be pretty. That's just what they do, I guess. <laughs> and then here we have the final uh, character that I came up with for Olivia, isn't she gorgeous? So it was based off the three random colors that I picked. And then I also just chose a skin tone because I didn't really want to draw a blue person or a pink person. So I got a nice natural skin tone there. So yeah, that is what I drew in this sketchbook. And also, let's go about the sketchbook. And it has a little pocket, so I have no idea what I've put in here. We can take a look, sees. Oh, look, there's our little surfer boy that I was mentioned earlier. Oh, here's my color key when I was testing to make my sculpture. Oh, I was just talking about how I wanted to do this again. It's been months since I've made a sculpture, like a real one, but I created this like fantasy lion with like flowers growing out of their mane. So this was like a little color key when I was trying to figure out what colors I wanted to use. And then here is when I was trying to figure out what size I wanted him to be. He doesn't really look like this, but I was kind of just trying to visualize the size of the lion so that I knew how big to make the sculpture. So yeah, those are what's in here. There is, oop, oop, oop. Okay, there is my sketchbook and it's time to start a new one. I do have one more ELO because when I bought this one, I bought two, so I'll probably be using that next. I've also been using a travel sketchbook since I've been traveling. I think I'll just keep that one separate and start another one of these because it's just a little bit smaller. And if I need a travel sketchbook in the future, I don't want to have filled it with sketches that I'd made at home. So it's time to start another ELO. Let me know what you think I should draw on the cover of it. I know before I have drawn characters on the cover and then more recently I drew just the words and the little design. I'm currently taking ideas. <laughs> when I was 14, I think 13, 13 or 14 was my very first sketchbook. And I've actually chronicled all of these sketchbooks on my YouTube channel. I'll have a link to the playlist where you can check out every sketchbook I've ever filled, all 22 of them. It's definitely a journey of art. <laughs> it's been um, over 10 years of sketchbooks. So you can kind of see how my style has changed different things that I've experimented with, you know, along the way. And yeah, things like that. Let me know what sketchbook you are on, how many you've filled, or if you're on your first sketchbook, that's so exciting. I don't know, I think keeping sketchbooks was really the beginning of my art journey. So I think they're very important to have, even if you don't finish them, just having some place to gravitate towards when you feel like drawing is just so important. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.